Hi, this time we are simulating and designing within FICO uh, an antenna like this. This is a dipole backed by a reflector. Um, this is a picture taken from Kraus book, antennas book. And you can see here that uh, this, is the, this is something that uh, operates like uh, an Iyagi antenna. And the reflector here is just a simple wire. But the, the behavior uh, improves as the reflector becomes bigger and bigger because you have a larger part of energy bouncing back in this direction. So how is the basic idea of this antenna? Just jumping here to Inkscape. You can see here we have a cross-section of the reflector and the dipole here. Um, first thing, we can think of uh, our way going in this direction, and this ray is, it bounces back, and what's the basic idea? We want here the ray that just left and the ray that what's reflected. We want them to uh, add up in phase here. So if we have a distance here between the dipole and the reflector of lambda over 4, lambda over 4, that means 90 degrees. That means what? We have this ray here, 90 plus 90, that means 180. So this is pi, or 180 degrees. So in this situation, we would have a destructive interference here. But if we take into account that the reflector adds another one eighty degrees, that means one eighty from this to the length of these two uh, rays here, plus the reflection given by the metallic metallic um, reflector here. So that says that sets the distance between, the optimum distance between the dipole and the reflector. It has to be lambda over 4, right? The path here is 180 plus 180 from the reflection here on this metallic surface. It adds up to 0 or 360 degrees. Okay, jumping to FICO, just let's close this and start another session. We create a new model, and then uh, our antenna is supposed to operate in 915 megahertz. So right-click in variable. The first um, variable is the frequency, 915 megahertz. Add. Um, we can set the mean, the starting frequency of our analysis to be 800 megahertz the maximum frequency of our analysis is 1.1 gigahertz. Add. We can say that our dipole has a radius of one millimeter. What else we are missing? And of course, the wavelength to construct our antenna is C0 over frequency. Evaluate, 30 centimeters, add, close. So we define all the variables here so we can proceed with our FICO modeling. So first thing we design the, line, the dipole, construct line. It's asking for two points, starting point and end point. Um, let's say it has, it's uh, spread across the z-axis or the n-axis here, minus wavelength over 4, copy, and paste here. So that means our radius has an overall length of wavelength over 2, right? Um, immediately we can come here and see if it's a perfect electric conductor, it's correct. And we can say it has a wire radius of one millimeter. Apply, okay. 
I can find this under right click wire one properties. And then you can see here it's across the Z axis. Now we need to proceed with our rectangle, um, the reflector, like you see here. The reflector, it has it, ha it has a distance, it's uh, one, lambda over 4 away from the dipole. First, we are going to design it in the same... Um... Now we need to do our rectangle, just we, we need to remember that our wire is a along this z-axis, type in rectangle. That's not the way it's supposed to be. We just go to work plane. There we go. Is it? That's it. So we can see our plane here is exactly as expected. It's parallel to the Z. Then we go to geometry. We select this point here, middle point. And we can say here that we have a rectangle of... Uh, wavelength and wavelength over 2. Maybe in your case it's different, but here wavelength and wavelength. That's it. Now you can see it's correct. Maybe depending on the your drawing, you may, you may change here, but that's the way it goes. Wavelength and wavelength over 2. Create this rectangle here, we just check if it's perfect electric conductor. That's set. We don't need to do anything more. And now we need to uh, move it to uh, translate it lambda over 4 in this direction. So we select this rectangle. It's already selected. Transform here. And rectangle here. Translate. And we jump from the origin 0, 0, 0 to um, 0 and here it's minus wavelength or, or wavelength over 4 so that means 90 degrees away there we go now we have everything we need here we need to say we need to move to source load we say we tell FICO what's What's our frequency? F min, F max, and let's say 21 points. We don't have F min. No problem. We just come here and say F min is 800 megahertz. Close. At any moment, we, we can change it. And now we go back here. F min F max 21. All right. We can say now that our wire here has a wire port on the middle. We need to select here wire port on the middle. Add port number one. We can tell there is a voltage source attached to it. 50 ohm, create. Um, the setting is done. We can move to the request area. We can request the far field. Just type in 3D. Add close. To We can right click here and, and, and ask to hide it. Next, we can ask for currents. Add and finally near fields. It's nice to see the near fields exactly on the reflector. So we just type in near fields and here starting point. We can use the control shift trick. We type about both time uh, simultaneously control shift here and you type in here. Keep on control shift and you select here. So we can see that across the X and Z, or U and N, we can spread our points. We don't need any point across um, Y because it's the same, it doesn't change. 
add close. Yes, everything is done. We can ask for the mesh. Let's say we have a mesh of wavelength over 4. It's done. Then solve run. We can see if we made any mistake here. Everything is seems cool. Everything is green. And we can proceed with the solver. It will ask us to um, save it. Uh, reflector. We have already the name, it doesn't, we don't care. Now the simulation starts. Okay, simulation is finished. Everything is done. We can press OK and move on to PostFICO. PostFICO will open the post-processing area. We can check on what kind of results we have here. OK, let's... Um, we have everything here. We can just delete it to start from the scratch, just to show you how it works. And here, first thing, we can check on, of course, the Cartesian. Let's see if it's actually um, operating in 900 megahertz. You see us here is reflection coefficient. We can type in the bit. And it's actually not here. It's supposed to be 915 megahertz. The minimum is around 850 megahertz because actually it's not half wavelength. It, it's better. It's closer to 0.48, but we can change it later. It's just a matter of changing the variable. And now we can see also all this, um, the, the post-processing data related to, for instance, near field. Let's click in near field here. You see it's very ugly. Um, we need to get it cleaned. We can move to mesh, mesh opacity, we can put it zero. And uh, what else can we do here? We can ask for exclusion. Uh, you see here, we will understand what you are doing. Now we move to um, a frequency close to our 900 megahertz, for instance. And now what you are seeing here, we might see in the beats better. We see the electric field at 900 megahertz. So if you ask for instantaneous magnitude and come to animate, we pick the face and click on play. We can see here how the electric field at 900 megahertz operates on this um, sheet of metal. You can see that all the time on the edges you have a very large electric field that is consistent because we have an open circuit and we have the maximum in amplitude exactly on the middle. If, now, if we now stop and instead of electric field we select the magnetic field is the opposite. Right, it's the dual behavior. Um, we, we see here the magnetic field, right? And we can also make it invisible. And um, here in display, we can see. the display you can see not this um, mesh opacity we go back to 40% surface extrusion we make it off and you can see the currents Now you can see double type here. We see the currents. It's a very nice plot of the current on the reflector. Um, you can see here under animate, play. Oops, it's not frequency but phase. We go back to 
900 megahertz more or less and you can play instantaneous magnitude you see how the currents develop on the metallic sheet on the reflector so because we have high intensity currents here on the edge that means we'll have some sort of diffraction and this diffraction will uh, make backside radiation arise so the larger the reflector is less energy goes in this direction it's a very nice plot you can understand what the effect is of this metal sheet here behind the dipole and we can also make it stop it and we can also see the far field just double click here make it the currents make the far field selected and we can see in the b what is what the effect is of the reflector we can see we have a gain of 10 db's because this is because this is the effect of the reflector the dipole alone has a much lower gain and we can now we can sweep the frequency and see how the gain works you see it's very slow and now we can make invisible the currents here and just see the far field and then we can animate the frequency and see how the far field works in the B and also linear it's better seen on linear then you see here all the energy that it's it operates like a lens focusing the energy in one direction so that's the idea of the reflector um, you can play around we can go back to this cat fico and just changing a little bit the wavelength over two here we can make it resonant on 915 megahertz thank you very much